Creative arts contributes around 90 billion rands to the South African national economy. This is why publicly funded arts, culture and heritage sector projects, events and organizations are key to economic growth and job creation. This means the development of creative arts also becomes very crucial. Good evening, my name is Zola Shalwana. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we discuss ways in which creative arts can be incorporated in schools curriculum and the importance of of doing so as the sector contributes positively to our South African economy. Joining us in studio is the chairman of Gerald Mabasa Foundation, Mr. Gerald Mabasa. Sir, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Azola. Now, I want us to start, um, you know, you, you need to tell us about your foundation. Um, a lot of people don't understand that it's very crucial for us to incorporate arts and culture in the school's curriculum. But we want, we want to understand what is the Harald um, Mab Mabasa Foundation? Harald Mabasa Foundation is all about skills development, mm -hmm. which has to do with uh, creative arts mm -hmm. in schools, uh, rural areas, more especially for school uh, dropouts, and most especially for a boy child. Because if you can have a look that uh, most of people these days, they are not academically smart. Mm -hmm. So we think that with our foundation, we can do better to develop their skills. Mm -hmm. So we want to understand when was the foundation established and uh, how far have you gone since its establishment? The foundation started back in 2014 as an art group mm -hmm. and then started Youth Empowering Dreams. And then I registered it as a, a foundation back in 2020. Mm -hmm. That's where we've managed to empower more than 500 boy child around the country, mm -hmm. more especially in rural areas. Mm -hmm. Is it only focusing on, on a male or a boy children, like you said? It was meant to focus on a boy child because uh, the boy children are the most forgotten generation. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, each and every time it's all about the girl child, this yes. the boy child. This. When you talk about GBV, say, we must prevent and protect, not grooming our boys to become a real man. Mm -hmm. So with the foundation, that's where we started to focus on a boy child, to groom them to become a real man, so that we can at least shy away from preventing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so you've issued out a statement where you have mentioned that you'll be marching uh, to the Department of Basic Education on the 16th of November 2022 um, to hand over a memorandum and demand a calling for creative arts to be a major subject in school. You wanted it, you want it to be part of the school syllabus. Tell us about this memorandum. No, the memorandum is uh, asking the Department of Basic Education mm -hmm. to make creative art a major subject from grade one to grade 12. Reason being, it's all about skills development programs in creative art. So mm -hmm. it's not just a subject, but mm -hmm. it's a career decider. You can, it's as the solution for job creation. Mm -hmm. You know, with creative art, you can start to make income while you're still in high school. Mm -hmm. Because in other countries, it's working, like countries like Brazil, you know, they invest too much in football. Mm -hmm. Here in South Africa, we're making a lot of, a lot of profit mm -hmm. on, on, on creativity. Mm -hmm. You know, our music is trending all over. It shows that a South African uh, creativity now has been recognized the whole world. Mm -hmm. So if we can start to develop skills from primary level, high school, then we are sorted, you know. When you talk about the, uh, securing and the growth of the economy, mm -hmm. it must start from a uh, primary level. Mm -hmm. Because bear in mind, or as I mentioned before, that uh, a lot of kids are not academically smart, but they've got the skills that need to be empowered. Mm -hmm. And while we can empower that, it means we'll be dealing with a lot of things, mm -hmm. like especially from rural areas, you know. Mm -hmm. There's art school seats, we know that, but not everyone can afford to go to art school. Mm -hmm. So this creative art must be in grade nine, uh, grade seven to grade nine. It must be a major subject. Bear in mind, I'm excelling in creative art in grade nine. I have to go to grade 10, then I have to choose a Greek or physical sciences, which mm -hmm. is something that has not, nothing to do with me as an artist. Mm -hmm. I don't have to understand physical sciences or to label the insect for me to become, to achieve my goal mm -hmm. or to, to live my dream. I mm -hmm. have to use the talent that I have. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember correctly, in high school, there's a subject called arts and culture, right? Yes. And I think most people drop it in grade nine, like mm -hmm. you've just said. Would you say that um, that subject is not enough? It's, it is enough, mm -hmm. but it needs to be extended until grade 12. Mm -hmm. I want it to, to start from grade one to grade 12. Mm -hmm. We have to start developing from childhood mm -hmm. and then to grade 12. Bear in mind, look, we talk about the high rate of school dropouts. Just imagine if we can have creative art or, uh, until grade 12. It means, for me not choosing physical science, I can choose creative art, mm -hmm. math literaries, English and all those stuff. I have that six subject that is needed for me to pass the metric. And obviously I'm going to pass mm -hmm. because there's something that I enjoy. Okay, so um, speaking about uh, creative arts being extended to grade 12 and also being a ma major subject, how do you think that it will help in shaping the, the future of our country? 
it means now we are not going to learn to get uh, to, to type the CV to submit it. Mm -hmm. We are going to learn and program and develop our skills so that we can create jobs. If mm -hmm. I can, I'm a content, a content creator right now, I can create the content that can hire more than 70 people mm -hmm. to go and shoot my content. Mm -hmm. So we need to focus on that. How many doctors and engineers that are not working? Mm -hmm. How many artists that are doing like something on, on like a podcast on, on YouTube? They are making like they are making a living. Mm -hmm. So we need to provide that as, as, as a major subject and also as a department of look, give us the resources so that we can produce something as a school. Mm -hmm. Just imagine maybe I and you we are from the same school. You are a presenter, I'm a cameraman. Mm -hmm. There's something we can do something as a school, mm -hmm. and then that will benefit the whole school and it will lay a good foundation. Like this broadcasters that are broadcasting a local content. Mm -hmm. We can produce something as a local content from school, then we start to make income while we're busy schooling. Mm -hmm. Then we'll be enjoying the syllabus and the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Now, realistically speaking, um, I'm sure you have presented this idea to different schools, right? Now, if you had to bring a parent of a child from a public school and you tell them this idea, most of them would probably won't even consider it, considering the fact that there are some struggling musicians, struggling um, rappers, and growing up, you're told that you need to be an engineer, a lawyer, or a medical doctor to make it in life. If you're not that, that, then you're not considered successful. What do you think that you still need to do as a foundation to make sure that you get those parents on board? Because when you're in high school, people that influence you are your parents, right? Those are the people that fuel you up and also kind of influence what you, the journey that you're going to take in life. For you to become a lawyer, it could be your mother telling you that you need to follow this path. So how, what have you done as a foundation to make sure that you get the parents on board as well? You no, know, we're always uh, having like the meetings and with this, like talking with parents and then the SGBs, that please right now, don't choose careers for your children. Mm -hmm. Now it's time we support our kids. Mm -hmm. We have to give kids what they want, which is education, which is entertainment through education. When we talk about the fourth industrial revolution, it's transforming the learning space, which means we have to transform, like everything must be entertained, entertain the child. You, bear in mind, I never thought that mathematics would have a poem. But right now, there's the mathematical poems, there's all those things. Mm -hmm. So it means that everything is going to entertainment way, which mm -hmm. is a creative part of it. Mm -hmm. Then why not creative art be a major subject in schools? Mm -hmm. The conversation is getting interesting as we go. Now, schools in South Africa offer a subject called arts and culture as part of the syllabus. But the content leaves much to be desired as it is taught largely by teachers that are not trained in the art discipline. Do you think that the Department of Basic Education is doing enough to make sure that creative arts is also being prioritized in the school syllabus? Well, let's take a short breather and we will continue with the conversation after the ed break. Welcome back. You are still watching So It Today and thank you for choosing to stay with us. If you've just tuned in, you're not too late. We are discussing the memorandum that the Gerald Mabasa Foundation will be handing over to the Department of Basic Education in demand of creative arts to be a major subject in schools. And we are still joined in studio by the chairman of the Gerald Mabasa Foundation, Mr. Gerald himself. Now, sir, I want, to I want us to discuss the fact that the Department of Basic Education has a shortage of teachers for quite a while well now I'm sure you're aware of that but did you state that in, in your memorandum that you've sent forward of how the department is going to source the teachers that are going to specialize specifically in creative arts? Yes I did uh, the very same way the way they've treated the education assistants they must apply you to hire the artist now to go and like specialize with the creative art at school because we know very well that we will talk about the budget and all these things but they have managed to create the, the, the positions for educational assistance. They must use the very same way and then to, uh, to, to appoint or deploy some people to go and teach their school. Mm -hmm. And we also went to the Department of Art and Culture to, um, to hand over the memorandum that they must work hand in hand, mm -hmm. basic education and art and culture to allocate the budget and to go and debate it in parliament mm -hmm. to make creative art major subject and to hire the struggling artist. Mm -hmm. So we do understand that um, the creative art is, is such a special subject that it will require a lot of resources. We're talking about your studios, we're talking about instruments, right? Do you have a plan on how all these resources um, can be available for students um, should the idea become to reality, especially, especially public schools, because I, I believe some private schools are already on board with having cre creative arts as actually a, a subject or something to specialize in. So we want to understand, um, would you expect the government to supply that or how do you think that we'll be able to have all these resources? As the foundation, we're going to assist the government to, to, to do that. Mm -hmm. we, there's some companies that we're in talk with as the foundation so that they can sponsor our creative art school competition that will begin from next year. Mm -hmm. Where the schools, will, the school that will be competing on a certain category, they'll be winning the, 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 the resources. Mm -hmm. 
and, and also certain funding for that category to go and use it at their own school. Mm -hmm. But the government must also challenge it in parliament mm -hmm. so that they can allocate the budget for that. Mm -hmm. We cannot keep on rescuing one company and say, no, we're allocating this budget to rescue this company. No, now we don't have to rescue. We, mm -hmm. we have to implement and empower the skills, which mm -hmm. is we have to, uh, to allocate those, those things. Mm -hmm. it's, it's doable in South Africa. There's a lot of companies that are, are willing to donate. Mm -hmm. So why, not, why don't we go, we go there and ask for donation? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of brands, the new upcoming brands, mm -hmm. where if you can go and do like the likes of Yahama is making the keyboards and all those stuff. Mm -hmm. so that we are from the Department of Education. Please, mm -hmm. can you donate out with a certain keyboard and all those stuff? Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. They are going to do that. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that there should be a time where perhaps you bring, you know, artists or people that have made it in the creative space to actually say that, especially to students, you know, so that they get to, to buy into this idea of studying creative arts, so that they see people that they can look up to, because it's always better when you motivate about someone that's right in front of you. Have you attempted that as a foundation? Yes, we, there were a lot of artists that we work with, and like last we had the long walk, which was uh, seeing us from work, uh, Northwest to Pretoria to hand over the memorandum. We mm -hmm. walked 74.2 kilometers mm -hmm. to go and meet the minister and hand over the memorandum. Mm -hmm. We're having a professional boxer, like Boy Munyaban. It's mm -hmm. coming from the very same village that we started the work in. Mm -hmm. We had the, like, the likes of Tumisan Lamin, he's an actor. Mm -hmm. He was in years or years and all those stuff. We're working with a lot of celebrities, the likes of Isaac Lacha, who's a professional boxer. He's mm -hmm. coming from a village in Malamulel. Mm -hmm. So we, with these people, we also go to them as foundation, like, look guys, you are the legend. How did you make it? with the disadvantage of you not having the resources. Mm -hmm. How can you motivate these kids at least to invest more time on, on, on their studies and also to, in, to believe on their talents? Mm -hmm. So we are working, we're not just saying that the, the department just do this and then we step aside. No, and we're also setting the memorandum that if some of the things you don't understand or how can you implement it, mm -hmm. invite us on board, we'll help you to think because we've got French mind, you know, they are all tired because they're mm -hmm. old. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, should this idea become a reality, what will it mean to you and the entire um, creative sector? What we want to see is to transform the educational system in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So That's once we can do that, you know that I, I can also rest in peace in my grave because I will be leaving something for kids, not my kids, for the mm -hmm. entire country. Mm -hmm. You know, for my, the future generations to come. Because if you can see, the educational system of 1994 that I was in, and the education system of 2030, it won't be the same at all. Mm -hmm. You know that now technology is dominating. Mm -hmm. So everything has been transforming, transforming, transforming. And as the Department of Education, they're still stuck on the very same place. Mm -hmm. And we need to transform. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to talk about transforming education into entertainment. Let's mm -hmm. give kids what they want. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we've got a match, an upcoming match, right, yes. on the 16th of November. And I believe that there's some people that would like to be part of that match, marching to the basic education officers. How can they go about? We are meeting at uh, Khosimampur and Madiba Street, open space in Pretoria. Mm -hmm. We will be marching to Skuman to hand over the, uh, the memorandum to the Minister of Basic Education. So everyone can come there. And we also have a transport from Mutualedi in Soweto, where the foundation originated from. You know, the squatter camp behind Barra, it originated from there. So we'll be having transport that will be picking people to the, the Pretoria for the march. So mm -hmm. we have to go there in numbers. It's not about uh, certain kids. It's about all our kids. Mm -hmm. I've been volunteering in a lot of schools. I've mm -hmm. seen the challenges that kids are not academically smart. Mm -hmm. And kids are not enjoying education because they only have enjoyment in that specific time when there's athletics, you know, in March or February. Mm -hmm. Then the whole year they're not doing anything and it makes them to drop out of school or not, not go to school in, in, in daily basis. Mm -hmm. So we need to go and send the message, look, this is what to do. We don't want kids to join us. We don't mm -hmm. want to disturb the exams. Mm -hmm. They will join us when the time is right. But for now, it's for us as parents, as concerned civilians, mm -hmm. to go and speak in numbers. Kids, they must remain in school. They must focus on their exams. And then they must let us speak on their, their behalf with the departments. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at the unemployment rate of South Africa, um, obviously now we are on the, on the fourth industrial revolution. A lot has changed and there are certain careers that are currently in demand. Would you think that it's safe to still introduce creative arts as something that is worth studying for? And also, will people get jobs? Because I think that's another thing that we need to look at when we're choosing what to study. In the next two or three, four years, will it be in demand? Is it going to feed you? Let's just be realistic. Yes, by far. Mm -hmm. What I can tell you, creative art is the only solution of this country in job creation. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about you going to look for a job, it's all about you creating your own job. Mm -hmm. Look, I can go and do visual art from primary school and then when I'm in high school, grade 10, I'm, mm -hmm. an, I'm my own fashion designer. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You are getting ready or you want to come to studio, you have to come to me and get the dress. Mm -hmm. It means I'm, I'm making income. Mm -hmm. Creative what is the solution. Mm -hmm. Now in 10 seconds, oh 20 seconds, let me give you 20 seconds. If someone wants to be part of your foundation, how do they join? Do you have a social media page? Just give us those details. On Facebook we are Gerald Mawasa Foundation mm -hmm. and Instagram is GM Foundation 20. Mm -hmm. And then on uh, Twitter is Karal Mawasa Foundation. Mm -hmm. And then our WhatsApp number, in, WhatsApp and call number 068 4740 Please repeat the WhatsApp number again. 068-4740-841. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. I can really see that this is something that's inside of you. And you really want to see it become a reality one day. And we do hope that it actually becomes a reality so that one day we call you in studio and you testify that, you know, remember when we had a, an interview when you wanted this to be a reality and now it's actually a reality. Thank you so much for joining us on Sir Today. Thanks, thanks a lot. And I will make sure that it becomes a reality. We believe in you. Now, that was the chairman of Gerald Mabasso Foundation, Mr. Gerald Mabasso himself, saying that he strongly believes that creative arts is the future of our economy because creative arts is all about developing and empowering skills, which is the main solution on job creation. Well, let's now go for a quick ad break. Will we return? More is coming. Welcome back. You are still watching Soto today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Unfortunately, we are almost at the end of the show and we are still talking about the calls to make creative arts to be a major subject in schools. Very strong points that came from Mr. Gerald Mabasa before the air break. And now we are joined in studio by film and television production student Gurape Zimona. Welcome to Soto today and thank you for joining us. Good day. How are you? I'm all right. Thanks to yourself. I'm okay. All right, it's good to hear that you're okay. Now, um, before the ad break, we were talking to Mr. Gerald Mabasa, who's the founder of the Gerald Mabasa Foundation, about the plans to march to the basic education offices to hand over a memorandum in demand of creative arts to be considered as a major subject in schools, particularly in high school. As someone yes. who's currently studying, um, you know, film and production, right, film and television production, right, within the creative sector, how do you feel about that? I feel like it's it's a valid um, point mm -hmm. because at schools, mostly from myself, from my experience, I I finished doing creative arts at like grade seven. Mm -hmm. So high school, they didn't take it serious. They mm -hmm. only gave us life orientation as a subject where we did sports mm -hmm. and we spoke about like physical sports and physical health. So I feel like creative arts should be continued up until like maybe grade 10. Because as artists, we must be able to be groomed from a young age to mm -hmm. be able to like express ourselves. Because I feel like um, art is a physical expression of one's emotions. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we have to start it from a young age to be groomed and to be given resources to be able to take it forward. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. uh, speaking about art being a physical expression of an emotion, uh, whenever I look at creators, you've got a certain look right okay. and also personality it's your colorful nails hair this that is it is it your personality is it is that how creatives should be yes i feel like as creatives we should have a form of expression be it your color mm -hmm. be it your clothes or whatever style you want to portray as an artist should give people a hint of what you like mm -hmm. Um, speaking for myself, I love colors, so okay. my nails and everything <laughs> should be colorful. So uh -huh. I feel like they must have um, something to express themselves, okay. which is like maybe an outfit or a certain part of art in you. Mm -hmm. Maybe like, what can I say? Maybe a small bag or something that ex expresses yourself. Okay. Now, yes. at what stage did you realize that you've got a, a passion for the creative industry? Okay, like I say, I'm into color. I okay. also do makeup. I'm a makeup artist. Oh, so okay. it started from grade six, whereby we, we had to decorate our books, our school books, like okay. your term one, to mm -hmm. make a divider to show that this is term one. I used to love decorating and I used to love painting activities at school. I also used to do role playing. Mm -hmm. So that's where I noticed that I have an artistic side to me. But the talent wasn't focused on at primary. It was just that thing of, okay, act, we give you marks and it's done. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it wasn't paid attention to. Mm -hmm. But I started from like grade six to notice that I love decorating, I love colors, 
I love taking pictures of trees and nature. Mm -hmm. That's why I noticed that I have an artist side to myself. Mm -hmm. yes. So let's say you were given an opportunity to study creative arts from a very mm -hmm. young age. I mean, maybe from grade one, grade two, the early grades. Yes. What difference would that have made in, in your life? I feel like as a film student, I'm starting to like focus more on the artistic side now, which is like set design, which is mm -hmm. like role playing. We're only starting to do like the vocal practices now of mm -hmm. when we have to go on stage and act or go on stage and present something. So if it all started from like grade one, I wouldn't have had so much issues of like going to the internet and teaching myself mm -hmm. the vocal techniques for speaking, for voice projection. Like I would have been able to know what I fall into most, be it like color, mm -hmm. music, because art goes into like a lot of streams. It's music. Some people feel like it's painting, like graffiti on walls. Mm -hmm. Some people feel like it's color for myself, which is I showcase my art through makeup and anything that has to do with color. So I feel like if it was started from grade one until like grade 10, mm -hmm. it would have been something that would have been nurtured from a young age. I wouldn't have to teach myself other things growing mm -hmm. up because mm -hmm. then we would have been taught how to do this, when to do this, what to do, when and why, and what to try maybe to like get a certain act of maybe being someone who's like, um, maybe I can say if I should act boyish and I'm mm -hmm. a female naturally, then we would have been taught if you want to act like a boy, try drinking cold water to enhance the bass mm -hmm. in your chest, <laughs> in your voice. Mm -hmm. And I would have known that it's not too much because they would have taught us. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's important to be taught from a young age so that you grow with something and it's mm -hmm. in you. Unlike learning at a later stage, you may leave it if you feel like it's not interest or the pointers you're getting towards it are not of help to you. Mm -hmm. So yes. tell me about your reaction when you told your parents that you want to venture into the creative arts, considering the fact that in our black societies, parents would want you to be a lawyer, engineer, or a medical oh doctor, or an accountant okay. to be considered <laughs> as, you know, successful. Yes. Um, I had a big problem. First things first, my dad is a lawyer, so he didn't want me to do this creative career. Mm -hmm. He was like, to me, everyone is in the media industry, everyone is in TV, but people are not getting jobs. Mm -hmm. People are sitting with degrees at home and diplomas at home. So he was like, this is a vague career. And I was mm -hmm. like, no, if you don't want to pay for my school fees, just don't do that. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to do what I like because this is my career at the end mm -hmm. of the day. My artistic side, I want to express it in every way possible. So black parents don't really understand the creative side of things. Mm -hmm. They know your be a teacher, be a lawyer, be a nurse type mm -hmm. of vibe. And not all of us are into those serious jobs. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, myself, I'm into going out, seeing different colors on mm -hmm. walls, finding out why there's a statue like that, mm -hmm. why there's graffiti of a monkey on a wall, mm -hmm. why does it have color blue when we know a normal monkey is brown? So uh -huh. I feel like parents don't understand. But if you stand your ground and tell your parent that this is what I want, I'm a creative, and also if you believe in yourself, mm -hmm. you'll be able to like achieve mm -hmm. what you want. Now, last question. Should yes. this become um, a reality, you know, having creative arts being introduced in schools? Do you think that it's going to benefit the next generation? 30 seconds. Literally. Okay. Um, I feel like creative arts is going to benefit a lot of children if they groom them from a young age and teach them acting, teach them role playing and teach them how to like voice out their thoughts on everything, on any artistic thing. They must teach them how to like practice, practice, practice and learn how to memorize things like a script and everything. And if they like colors, they should teach them the meaning of colors and so on. But it should start from a young age so that they grow with it from mm -hmm. within. Yes. Thank you so much, Kia, for gracing us no with your problem. presence and joining us. I think next time I will be, you know, having some colourful nails because I also <laughs> consider myself as a, as so. a creative. Thank you very Thank much. You. We wish you well in everything that you do and also your future endeavours. Now, that was one of the students who is currently studying film and television production, giving us her perspectives around the calls for creative arts to be considered as a major subject in schools. We know that the Gerald Mabasa Foundation on the 16th of October will head 
to the Department of Basic Education to hand over a memorandum in demand on the matter. Well, that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about the show by simply sending us an email on Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can contact us on 011 933 -3000. From myself and the rest of the team, we will see you on the next news bulletin that's coming right after this. So goodbye for now and thank you for watching.